My name is Anthony. Welcome back to Slay the Spire Modded. Alright, we were going Ascension 15 for each of the characters, right? I believe that to be the truth. Defect time. Encounter a random event, but upgrade a card is pretty damn powerful on defect. That zap upgrade early. Okay, how many elites do I want to go for? Three kind of on easy offer. I think I'll try and take those. If the game will be so generous as to give me that as a gift. When I say on easy offer, I'm just talking about the fact that they are on the path that I would like to traverse anyway. Hey, sure. Thank you. Damn. Lightning hit the wrong target. Oh, well. All right. I think we're all good now. <clears throat> Lifeblood potion as well as go for the eyes turbo compile driver. I think I'll actually hard pass there. I really want blizzard. Oh, claw rake. Yeah, I haven't seen a claw rake this early on. I've got to take it. It's time to make the claw build. Okay. Toy Battleship. Whenever you enter a rest site during the next combat, first card played each turn also draws a card. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm okay taking one damage here. We'll save the lifeblood potion for a later combat, naturally. Right, full strike. Well, I guess loop, cool headed tempest. I'm gonna pass. I'm looking for claws now. Oh gosh, I really want to go aggressive with the dual cast strike. Yeah, it's dual cast strike. strike. I need to start getting the damage out. This deck doesn't have the ability to deal a ridiculous amount of damage, so I kind of just have to wherever available. So Claw Rake can't upgrade itself, but it can be upgraded by other effects. Obviously, other claws. All right, don't kill me. That'll kill me. That'll kill me. Hey! You didn't kill me. Nice. Garbage. Uh, Dorian, whenever you gain a debuff, gain temporary HP equal to the amount. At the start of your turn, reduce your turn-based debuffs to on pickup, raise your max HP by five. Uh, Blizzard? I think I might have to take that. I was originally going to go Glacier, Blizzard, etc. But, um... Claw Rake. Uh, okay. Uh, crystallizer. Crystal orbs give two additional focus to adjacent orbs. If at the end of your turn you have more than half of your orb slots empty, channel a crystal upgrades to be innate. I'm going to take the blizzard. I have to rest here, otherwise we're definitely dead. Thankfully, the next combat can't be Gremlin Knob again, which is just very handy. As much as I wanted to use Blizzard there, the extra five defense probably keeps us alive for an extra turn. I also don't really want to use Zap this turn. I need the extra HP. Oof. Oof. All right, please give me Blizzard next hand. I'd like to be able to play it this deck and next deck. Okay. That's no Blizzard. Literally, Blizzard is my final card in the deck. You know, Rhapsody Lock. 
That means my next blizzard is another five hands away rather than, you know, soon. Ouch. That's really rough. All right. And Claw Rake. I'm gonna channel... I shouldn't have played the Defend, by the way. I'm gonna channel the... Extra Defense there. There's our new deck. Taking one damage this turn. That's the best output of damage we can get that turn. And come on, there's the blizzard. Woo! Got him. Bronze scales. At the start of each combat, gain three thorns, as well as all for one leap. Got bronze scales, as well as the sentry gave us magic flask. At campfires, the rest option now may be taken for free. It consumes a use. Start with three uses. Kill bosses to gain two more uses. Uh, I think here we'll take the leap. All for one isn't really going to do too much in this deck. Not unless I end up with a bunch of claws and I don't have the claws yet, so I can't really take the other one. And we definitely need the HP. Geo, the first time you lose HP, each combat trigger the passive effect of all of your channeled orbs and channel one crystal. Eh. Could be a lot worse, I guess. So we'll do our free rest to the... I think the next is upgrade dual cast. Don't be gremlin knob. Don't be Gremlin Knob. It's Gremlin Knob. All right, we're probably dead. I I elected to take that risk there. I elected to take the risk that this was going to be Gremlin Knob. Yeah. Sometimes when you take risks, they pay off. Sometimes they don't. That's okay, though. Um, well, we'll actually be fine. Surprisingly. Bag of marbles at the start of each combat apply one vulnerable to all enemies, as well as a dex potion, as well as cold snap for this deck, I guess. Yeah, I'm really glad that I chose what I did because I haven't found more claw rakes yet. I actually might want to take Lee's Waffle. Upon pickup, raise your max HP by five, uh, by seven and heal all of your HP. It's either that or the specialized C uh, circuitry, which upgrades to become a name, but it's also still zero cost. Calculation training is really good. Um, who's our boss? Not Hexagos, damn. Calculation training is too powerful to turn down. And we'll take Tiger Marble. Uh, the other ones were Birdface Stone, when we play a power card, heal for 2 HP, as well as Lee's Waffle. Upon pickup, raise your max HP by 7 and heal all of your HP. Uh, and then there's also Tiger Marble at the start of each combat at a random card which exhausts your hand across zero when played. Why did we not... Uh, okay, yeah, because we have a shop in the next space. Well. I may actually want to take the Discovery there. In this character specifically, Discovery can be really powerful. Uh, so the fact that we can rest for free is a lot of the reason why we didn't take Lee's Waffle there. Mm, okay. Reboot's totally good here. Discovery gives us... I guess the awful one. Because it brings back the calculation training, and now we've already got two of our calc up. Nice. Turn could have been a lot worse. Hyper Beam, can't take that. 
It's got to be auto shields. I'm not generating it for this turn. I'm generating it for later turns. It's not a great split on the enemies there. More than ready to admit that. But I think we'll be able to defend ourselves pretty adequately regardless. Um, we've got two ways of introducing a bunch of frost to our pool. Uh, we'll take a rainbow here, definitely. Cool. Just trying to generate as much frost as possible here. Durian is giving us a bunch of passive HP. Passive, sorry, uh, temporary HP. So we do end up taking one damage. Frontliner dies, though. There's Blizzard. That's okay. We've got it set. One goes down, and the other does not have long left in this world. All the expensive cards that you can get in Defect, and there are a lot of them, are particular boons for Discovery. That's why I was so very quick to pick it up. Creative AI, Reboot, Rainbow. I don't like Rainbow. Not really at all. I want to take Reboot. Runic o uh, Octahedron. Uh, draw one fewer cards each turn. Um, and every time you play two cards in a single turn, draw a card. We don't have that many zero costs. So we can't really take that. Black Hole. All cards cost zero. Any card entering your discard pile is exhausted. I obviously can't do anything with that right now. What with the fact that if we ever take that, our deck will die. Uh, so grab bag, uh, replay the spire, choose one energy boss relic and one non-energy boss relic to obtain. Both are out of a choice of three and cannot be skipped. Yikes. Uh, the deck is really slow, so we can't take cracked hourglass, which is if any battle takes longer than three minutes, you die. Uh, there's also RNG, randomly run into a knob. We can't do that because we take a very long time to get through the fights and we play a bunch of skills so we would upgrade the knob and then die two knobs on that floor almost killed me uh so we have to take loss of stone we don't really have a choice thankfully it's only one strength lost uh sneko eye yes It invalidates a lot of the upgrades that I did on that first floor, but... Yeah, let's do it. The wildest things happen in uh, Defects and Echo Irons. Woo! Hello, Glacier. Obviously, that should be in calculation training first. These enemies are capricious, which means that every single time I play a card, they change their tune. Ah, uh, no, I'll play one more. Damn it, now they're both debuffing me. Those debuffs, at the very least, are going to... No, they're not debuffs! Oh, that's really not good for us. Probably take Hyper Beam just for the fact that we can do a ridiculous amount of AoE damage. At the very least, uh... Obviously not a huge fan of how this turn is going. Well, at least we're getting a bunch of passive HP. Passive? No. Different word that isn't that. <clears throat> Thank you for the reboot. Mm. How did I make it that much worse on myself? Ow, 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 ow. 
At the very least, the enemy didn't really damage me because of our thorns. Block potion as well as... Uh-uh, don't want any of those. Probably don't want to encounter Time Eater out of those. Unfortunately, that means the store in the next space literally does nothing for me. But thankfully, there's nothing in there I wanted either. Uh, the Bandana gained two Thievery for the first three turns of combat. Thievery is every time you deal unblocked attack damage, gain gold, as well as Prismatic Shard from the base game. Combat reward screens now contain all, uh, colorless guards and cards from other colors, as well as Pantograph. At the start of boss combats, heal for 25 HP. Mm -hmm. Yup, time to defend. Chrysalis gives us a bunch of cards that would otherwise already cost zero. Nice. Not nice. Um... No prefetch calculation training. Make it suitable for the next hand. Okay, I gotta put one of these characters on the ground. Right, so that's one Joker down on the ground already. Nice. Definitely double defend, strike. I think it's just going to be Glacier and then reboot. Ooh, White Noise gave me buffer. Okay. Could have been a lot worse. In fact, could scarcely have been better. All right, we'll pop Turbo there. Both White Noise and Turbo did show up at zero cost, so I'm starting to become a little suspicious of that. In that I wonder if Chrysalis is somehow overriding the confusion effects from Sneko Eye. Reflection would be a great card for this deck, by the way. Claw. Alright, let's diversify our win condition, though. No. I don't really want an Nuloth. Hello, Nightmare. Mm, okay, Mirror Shield. Could be a lot worse. Right, of course Claw doesn't go in this deck. We have Snackawai. Sorry, forgot that. Alright, Mirror Shield and Steam Barrier are both costly here, which means that uh, my previous beliefs have not borne out. That much. Enemy does 16 damage themselves. Stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, etc. Right. Discovery of Duhual. I mean, Duwal is just not going to do anything here. Okay. Another calculation training, as well as defend, defend. Strike. Managed to actually completely defend there. I know I'm as surprised as you might be. If you're as surprised as I am. That's the qualifier there. Every day, my glacier becomes stronger. That's not to say that it's strong at all, but stronger than it was before. So crystal orbs, if you have less than five orb slots, gain an orb slot when you evoke them. Oh, 
Okay, so the number on the evoke, I, I knew this before, but I'd forgotten it. The number on the evoke is affected by reflection, so you can use them to gain orb slots if you have some focus in the deck as well, uh, which we do. Defend me. Doesn't matter. Could have been safe anyway. Sure. I'm going to prefetch Zap to see if I can make it zero cost by making an innate in my next opening hand. Very nice. Got myself a super cushy setup for. I guess I have a bunch of zeros in this right now. Did not need to play that one, by the way. Ooh, zero shield, strike, strike, and finally Blizzard for the kill. Uh, light bulb. if you have any unspent energy at the end of your turn, draw that many cards at the start of your next turn. Well, there's another claw. Sure. I know. I know. Right. We'll upgrade the blizzard to increase our damage. Ooh, metamorphosis for the attacks. Ooh, second blizzard in the deck. That's really good. And the zap is two costs, so making an innate did not affect it. I have ukulele coming up in the deck, so. That's not exactly the hand I wanted. All right. <clears throat> There's a very expensive discovery right there. It's time to defend. Thank you for the bite. Claw, ball lightning, strike, strike, claw rake. And we're pretty well set up. Yep, it's the old Sneko Eye Claw build. You know, that build. That hurts. First combat damage I took there, actually. That is to say, first combat damage I've taken in this fight. And the enemy dies on thorns. Oh, thank you. Stone Calendar, the end of turn seven, deal 40 damage to all enemies. Yeah, kind of makes sense. Warpaint upon pick up upgrade to random skills, leap and reboot. Great. Neither of those change their cost as part of the upgrade, so it makes them a lot better there. Okay. That noise gives us static discharge. That's kind of a tragedy of an opening turn right there.
Ouch. All right, I'm gonna calc training rather than play the second defend. The second defend is just super costly. In the easy extra damage and then the more difficult extra damage well, it's when you get none All right. got him dual polarity channel one lightning and dark crystal and frost water and hellfire or glass and plasma Upgrade reduces cost. Channeling a Crystal Frost is pretty good. Obviously would be our go-to, though. Our default, so to say. Probably not what I was looking for there. Uh, source. I wasn't looking for that there. Okay, this is a lot better. We want the Crystal and Frost. Right. Unfortunately, we do actually only have one Blizzard in this deck. Empty bin is going to be really handy here. Never mind, there's our second blizzard. Enemy dies on their first hit. Kind of had to count on that. I'm trying to dilute the garbage cards in my deck right now. Because gosh, there are a lot of them. I figured we were probably dead here, but it's possible we aren't. I just wanted to go all out offense. Uh, it gave me a different card. Well, thankfully that doesn't really help this turn. Okay, so... I can play two defense for seven apiece. Then I can use cold snap. Claw rake strike in order to take out the front liner. Or I could just cold snap strike them and then claw rake a different line. Claw rake is actually eight damage versus cold strap or uh, cold snap or strike, which are each nine. I think that always has to happen. I think that always has to happen. I think that always has to happen. Now it's just down to whether or not I play another defend and then cold snap, which will literally leave me on one HP. 
or use a gambler's brew. This is a strategic decision rather than a... Well, rather than just like miscalculation. So I have to decide, do I think that my next hands help me survive more? Yes, 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 possibly. No, yes, possibly. I don't think I can rely on that. There we go. Alive on one HP. Uh, no. So the gremlin cook buffs before the other character gets an attack in. So there's an interesting precedent set in the game for this kind of thing. I thought the gremlin, uh, the gremlin cook was a heal, by the way, so that's entirely my bad. Um, but there's an interesting precedent set in the game by this, and that's that one enemy will never buff another before that enemy attacks, and one enemy will never debuff you with vulnerability before another enemy attacks you. And the reason that doesn't happen in the base game is because it makes it difficult to read from the intents what is actually going to occur at a glance. It obfuscates information that the game portrays as infallible, perfect information. Uh, that's the reason that in the, uh, the Colosseum fight, uh, this is the most recent example of this being changed, uh, in the Colosseum fight, there's two gremlin knobs. The gremlin knob in front, they attack left or right, so the gremlin knob in the leftmost position, uh, cannot apply vulnerability to you. And the reason they can't do it is because if they could apply vulnerability, then the second one could hit you for an attack that suddenly has vulnerability applied that you weren't accounting for. I wasn't accounting for it because I thought that the Gremlin Cook was just a healer. Um, I will know to do that in the future in the modded series, although I will mention that the game doesn't have a precedent for that kind of thing occurring. It, in fact, specifically the opposite. <coughs> Excuse me. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay This Maya Modded. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. And hopefully we'll see you next time.